right now, it's, it's best thought of as digital gold. The people that actually are the richest people in the country all are massively concentrated, you know, Buffett and Berkshire, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg. So they're not, they're not widely diversified. They may be, they're, they're highly concentrated. And I think that's because they have a high degree of confidence or, or have had a high degree of confidence in the, in the value of those investments. But my, my thinking here was that um, you know, I, I heard a talk on, on Bitcoin given by the person who's known as Patient Zero in the Bitcoin world, Wences Casares. And um, Wences gave a talk at, at the Allen Company Sun Valley Conference, and he let off his talk. This is 2014, I want to say. Uh, he let off his talk by saying that, asking how many, anybody owned Bitcoin. No, nobody in the audience owned it, except for him. And did anybody know what it was? And a, a few scattered hands went up. And he said, well, let me explain to you um, why I own Bitcoin. And he said, and it's because I understand why you wouldn't understand it because you all live in America and you have a rule of law and you have uh, you know orderly governments and in most in most times you have you know low relatively low inflation and a prosperous economy and he said but I'm from Argentina and my family's been there 150 years and we've been wiped out four separate times by the Argentinian government seizing our assets nationalizing the banks inflating us out with hyperinflation and he said so Bitcoin can't be touched by the government it's a it's a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized independent network it's a ledger that records every transaction that's public it's immutable and he said so the government if you have bitcoin the government cannot take it away from you and he, he said so it's it's, an, it's think of it as an insurance policy and he went into it and talked about it and i thought you know and he talked about putting one percent of your liquid net worth in bitcoin and i thought that was sensible he laid out what it what it could do if it worked. He he said then that it was very risky because then it was about two hundred dollars. But I, I I bought some then and I bought a little bit more over time and it became five hundred dollars and then I stopped buying it and I didn't buy it for years until just the spring of this year it hit a sixty six thousand dollar high price and then in four weeks it was in half. Now Bitcoin has gone up on average one hundred and seventy percent a year for the last eleven years. Now but that's not every year it's just an average. It's gone down three different times by more than eighty percent. So that's, that is, you know, a very volatile and therefore very dangerous if you're, especially if you're levered as you can be if you're on some of these exchanges that'll loan you 50 to one on, on your Bitcoin. But um, each time it's been stopped at around the 80, low 80s level and it's come back. And this, year, this time I started buying it again at $30,000 down from 66. And my reasoning was, there's a lot more people using it now. There's a lot more money going into it in the venture capital world. There are a lot of people who are skeptics who are now at least uh, trying it out. And, uh, and I thought maybe maybe 50% is a good stopping point for it. But if it goes about down to 80 or 85, I'll buy it all the way down. Well, it did stop right around 50% and it slowly started its way back up again. But I, I bought a fair amount uh, at, you know, at the $30,000 range and have been adding to various Bitcoin related uh, investments since then. So uh, there's a company that you know, that we own in, in, our, in our income fund called Stronghold Digital, which is a Bitcoin mining company where the CEO owns 35%. It looks like they could make, you know, six to eight dollars in a couple of years. And they're a very low cost miner of Bitcoin. And the, all their energy that they're using, the electricity usage is all renewables or, or uh, it, it gets credits for cleaning up abandoned coal mines. So it's one of those things that, um, uh, I mean, as much as I like Bitcoin, you know, I've, I've added to bought a uh, strong, stronghold in here and own it also via the fund, as well as MicroStrategy and some other companies. And the reason, I, I, the reason I, I, I like the insurance company analogy is because if you think about, people talk about the intrinsic value of Bitcoin, this is a, a Warren Buffett argument, that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value, it doesn't have any earnings, it'll never pay any dividends. Uh, and so, so how do you even think about something like that? It, it is a new technology, it's something that couldn't be done before. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. But in any case, the, the answer that I have to that is, well, I mean, what's the, what's the intrinsic value of that Mickey Mantle baseball card that sold for five and a half million dollars? It's just cardboard and it, it doesn't even have a legend. It could be counterfeited very easily. Uh, or what's the intrinsic value of a Picasso painting, which is just canvas and paint uh, and, uh, you know, maybe a frame. But people will pay millions or tens of millions of dollars for it. And it, so it comes down at the very basic level for supply and demand. 
So Bitcoin is the only economic entity where um, the supply is unaffected by the demand. So even with gold, if gold, which is $1,800 today, if gold goes to $18,000, there will be a lot more gold mined because mines that are unprofitable will, will become profitable. And so gold, which, which accretes today, the production of gold is about equal to about one and a half to two percent of the total value per year. And that's the same uh, accretion that Bitcoin has currently. Uh, that, but this year, 2022, I think will drop below 1.5 percent on that. So only only 21 million Bitcoin can ever be created or close to it. It doesn't matter if Bitcoin is 100,000 or, or 20 million. There's only going to be that many of them. So um, all you have to really believe is that the demand for Bitcoin will grow faster than one and a half percent, you know, over the next number of years and the price inexorably will go up. So I've, I've, I've only recently been allowing myself to be described as a Bitcoin bull. I, I used to tell people, they say, oh, you're a Bitcoin bull. You, you own a lot of Bitcoin. I'm like, I do own a lot of it, but I'm actually a Bitcoin observer and I'm observing its trajectory as a new technology and comparing it to the trajectories of things like uh, the printing press or the steam engine or the railroads or the automobile or electricity and and it's following that very uh, uh not not predictable because it's not predictable certainly in the early, early days a well understood path for the adoption of new technologies and you know stan i think it was stan druckenmiller uh said earlier in the year that and and, and now he owns bitcoin by the way um but he said that bitcoin was a solution in search of a problem and what I've found amusing about that is every new technology is, is a solution in, in search of the problem. Because you, you have a new technology, and then you try and figure out what you're going to do with it. And so, you know, when, you, when we created the Internet, what are we going to do with that? So uh, the Defense Department had, had use, good uses for it, but it was tough for other, other people to see. And, but now everybody can see what the value of the Internet is. Same mm -hmm. thing with the internal combustion engine, which was very dangerous and all, but now that's taken over the world, and now we're going to move to, to electricity. So uh, all kinds of technologies have to grow into their... Uh, grow into their potential. And Bitcoin is, I guess if you want the theoretical answer to the question is, that's the work of Brian Arthur, Santa Fe Institute and, and Stanford, who is kind of the leading authority on what, what he calls increasing returns economics and what he calls lock-in and path dependence in the economy. So his basic idea is that when technologies reach a certain dominance and they're the, they're the leader, it's almost impossible to dislodge them even without a very superior technology. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow. 
in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.